Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, why institutional custody is a big, big, big deal. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? So guys, as promised in our earlier coffee chat today, we are doing a deep dive into why institutional grade custody is a big, big, big deal in this digital asset space. And if you're holding XRP and you're part of the XRP ecosystem, you are going to want to watch this all the way right through to the very end because it is going to be massive in terms of the impacts of what we're going to talk about. Now, guys, as we all know, the big news that came out today was the announcement that Ripple was buying standard custody and trust and here's the article right over here just take a look and listen to this xrp explosion in the cars as ripple renews optimism in the u.s market with its latest acquisition ripple a leader in global cross-border payments has revealed plans to acquire standard custody and trust company a new york based crypto custodian firm and we know that standard trust was a subsidiary of course of polysign and that is a company that has been founded by david schwartz and arthur brito who are also founders of the xrp ledger now just listen to this right here according to an announcement by ripple on tuesday the acquisition aims to secure a new york trust charter expanding ripple's u.s regulatory licensing and enabling the company to offer a broader range of services Today, we're excited to announce that Ripple has signed a deal to acquire standard custody, strengthening our product offerings and adding to our growing portfolio of regulatory licenses around the world, the company stated. Notably, Ripple's acquisition of standard custody and trust will still be subject to approval from the New York Department of Financial Services and will add a crypto custody and settlement business to Ripple's portfolio. This acquisition will allow Ripple's customers to maintain custody with the company instead of relying on external partners. Major, major note right there. Monica Long, Ripple's president, highlighted the company's long-term vision for the acquisition, emphasizing the potential for offering more financial products and services to institutional customers. Absolutely paramount, guys, right there. According to her, the deal will enable Ripple to offer a wider range of infrastructure pieces to financial institutions, allowing them to benefit from blockchain technology. Now, here's the actual quote. As we integrate custody more deeply into Ripple's products, we see clear synergies with standard custody to complement our payments and custody offerings all in the service of being a one-stop shop to move, convert, and store value with blockchain and crypto tweet it long. Now, guys, when we're talking about institutional grade custody, obviously, we're talking about major financial institutions. And what are we talking about there? Of course, we're talking about banks, money service businesses. Of course, you're dealing with hedge funds and pension funds and all of these kind of things. Now, guys, when it comes to this space and custody, why do these people need a different kind of custody than what you and I would want to have maybe with our ledgers and our decent wallets and our EpiPals and all that? Well, because guys, it narrows right down to their fiduciary responsibility. Now, I know a lot of people, we throw that out there, fiduciary responsibility, and don't give a clear definition as to what it is. Well, take a look over here for just a minute. And let's go over that. Fiduciary is a person or organization that makes financial decisions 
on behalf of another party who is legally obligated to act in their client's best interest. And that's right out of there, out of Investopedia. And that's basically what a fiduciary responsibility is. So when you're talking about institutional adoption, institutional custody, and these mammoth, mammoth organizations, which are responsible for the tens of billions, in some cases, trillions of dollars of assets under management, they have no way can they touch this space with a 10 foot pole without absolutely assuring that the protection and the security is there on an institutional level. Now, guys, why is this so vitally, vitally important? Well, the reason it's so vitally important, of course, is because without that, we cannot see the broader institutional adoption. Now, I've heard people put in the comments there, well, they're actually afraid of potential institutional adoption. The reality is, guys, if we ever want to see these three, four, and perhaps even five-digit numbers for a lot of the assets in this space, you are not going to get that without institutional adoption and why is that because we're talking about the global money supply which we're going to talk touch base on in a little bit and the amount of it that is invested and absolutely entrusted to these asset managers you know around the wide world we're talking literally trillions and trillions of dollars now here's an article right here from forbes and the title of this article is The Institutional Guide for Securing Digital Assets. And we can see institutions are moving into this space and crazily. Now, if we go down here a little bit and, you know, they talk a little bit about self-custody. Well, here we are. The Institutional Guide to Digital Asset Custody. Digital asset custody services from reputable custodians are becoming increasingly important in meeting right there fiduciary duties and avoiding compromise, especially as an increasing number of asset managers from financial advisors to brokerages guys and banks are gaining exposure to digital assets. I mean, do you think that when you watch the price of Bitcoin move the way in which it has recently, that that is retail money? Absolutely no way. We are talking about billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to move the price like that. And on top of that, you're talking about institutions that are out there doing it. And what we're really dealing with here is the change of the guard into the new financial system that is in fact what's going on and you literally have ripple who is out there working with nation states building the infrastructure for what guys the evolution of money with the introduction of central bank digital currencies well obviously if we're going to be in a digital system where you're going to see the tokenization of real world assets the tokenization of securities the proving of our you know maybe our land titles using non-fungible tokens and the like you are absolutely going to need institutional grade custodial services that are going to literally give the wide world the confidence it needs to dive head first in into accepting of this new system now i want us to take a look at what ask ourselves some questions here what size of market are we talking about here well here's a little headline right here from coinpedia now this is back in january there just this last january january 25th 2024 ripple enters 10 trillion crypto custody market with medico now that was when they had got in with medico and the market was abs for these digital custody of these digital assets in an institutional way even then they're looking at a 10 trillion dollar market just to compete to custody these assets that needs to speak volumes to you about where we're going with the future of this space and how the monetary system is changing in such a massive massive way especially with everything that you have to deal with it and how the impacts of that are going to be and when we get institutional adoption like that when we satisfy every regulatory requirement guys it is going to blow the doors off of what most people can even fathom and that's why i'm always out there and saying this is probably going to represent the greatest 
you know, wealth transfer in the history of mankind. Now, I'm going to show you why I believe that right now. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, the ecosystems in this space, the tokenomics won't allow it. That's just way too much money. Well, guys, I'm going to show you a visualization here that I've gone over in the past. Now, this is from 2020. So just add, just consider the numbers from that period till now and how these numbers have certainly inflated and gotten more and more massive than you can imagine. Now, each one of the squares in this visualization is worth roughly $100 billion. So here we have the silver market and it's worth maybe $100 billion. And back at that time, the total value of all cryptocurrency was what, $244 billion in 2020. 2020 when this was done and of course now we're on the mark of march towards two trillion well look at this here's military spending in the world hundreds of billions trillions of dollars right what about the u.s budget deficit back in 2020 well we know that it's been way way bigger than that and around there it's like 3.8 trillion what about coins and banknotes? Well, around the wide world at the time in 2020, total banknotes totaled $6.6 trillion. What about the Federal Reserve's balance sheet? Now here they're saying on the side here, the Fed's balance sheet now sits at a what? $7 trillion in 2020. Now over 40% of that total had been added in 2020 alone. And since that time, it has just skyrocketed rocketed from there what about global billionaires well around that time we had 2095 billionaires in the world worth about eight trillion dollars right there now here's gold and and all of that kind of stuff 10.9 trillion the fortune 500 and here you got microsoft of course apple amazon alphabet which is you know google facebook and the like and they have them in there into like Microsoft thing, 1.3 trillion, Apple, 1.3 trillion, Amazon, 1.3 trillion, and on and on and on it goes. Now, stock markets. Well, look at this, guys. Back at that time, 89.5 trillion for all the global stock exchanges around the wide world as of April of 2020. Well, we know it certainly has increased since that time. And I'm what I'm wanting to point out here, here's the narrow money supply and the broad money supply, which worked out to what, 95 7 trillion global debt back at that time 253 trillion on and on global real estate well the global real estate was worth 280.6 trillion and you look at global wealth and 360 trillion with basic nations and everything like that and of course the derivative market into the quadrillion and stuff like that my point is this guys when you're talking about this space and the way the world is moving into this massive massive new digital economy with distributed ledger technology taking front and center stage zero doubt do you think it would take very much of any of these remember each one of these sectors just the stock exchange alone. I mean, you had Larry Fink come out there saying the next evolution of these markets is the evolution, you know, uh, evolution of these markets is the tokenization of securities. Well, when he said that, it was around this period of time and the value of these markets were $89.5 trillion. Now, you just imagine this, just that, moving over to this right here. Guys, how big do you think this space can truly get down the road? I mean, Paint a mental picture. If you think that we're talking about it, we're going into a new digital economy where everything, your ID, your assets, your history, your financial records, your medical history, on and on and on, is all going to be tokenized, all going to be digitized, and on and on. And of course, with all the central bank digital currency of the world, how much of this has to really move into this right here to see massive, massive massive appreciation not too much does it well guys that's why i believe this space is going to represent the greatest wealth transfer in the history of mankind and let's be genuinely honest with one another most people are completely oblivious to it and here you got a company like ripple that is utilizing their ecosystem right now and getting right 
ready for the launch of a generation of what's coming. And guys, XRP explosion on the cards. When you're literally seeing a bridge asset like XRP being utilized to solve the interoperability problem, the Bank of International Settlements working with Ripple to solve the interoperability problem between central bank digital currencies and XRP is absolutely being utilized as the solution to that problem. It is mind blowing. And that is why when we look at these kind of changes and how, you know, institutional custody of these digital assets is a major, major, major deal. And when we see this stuff happening, guys, we're talking about the framework of this new, new economy being put in place so that we do get to see the institutional adoption that's coming. And it is going to blow the literal doors off of what most people expect. I genuinely believe it. And you just have to understand what the global money supply is and how all this is interconnecting and working together. And let's not forget, you got the ISO 222 messaging standard out there. And what are they talking about right now? Well, obviously, by 2025, integrating the entire wide world and every financial institution on the globe that wants to partic participate in this global economy is going to need to acquiesce to those messaging standards. Well, guys, you're looking at what's changing. You're seeing it right before your very eyes. And I'm telling you, for all the naysayers and all the fudsters and all those people that are poo-pooing XRP and this space and what's coming, I'm telling you, in my estimation, they are literally going to rue the day because I genuinely believe that we are about to see something transition in the next year or two in this space between 2024 and 2025 that is going to blow the doors off of anything that has ever, ever happened in the past and a technological revolution that is going to blow the minds of most people. In fact, I believe within five to 10 years, should Jesus tarry, we won't even recognize the way the world is today in that new world of what it is. Just think, guys, about these little things right here. Do you know these smartphones were invented in 2007? That doesn't seem too long ago for those of us that have been there and are now here. And we realize the impacts that that technology has had in changing the way the world literally works. Most people don't even walk into their bank branches anymore because they do it on one of these right here. And on top of that, how about our interaction with one another and social communities that are transcending borders and on and on and on. Guys, what's coming in the future, I think is going to blow the doors off of what most people expect. And guys, having said that, institutional custody is a big, big big part of that. And I'll tell you what, I am not going to miss it. I have done, Judy and I have done our research. We've got our ticket and we are buckled in. And I'm telling you what, guys, in my estimation, it's time to buckle up because in the next few months, I think we are going to literally absolutely blast right through the stratosphere in this space. And it is going to literally change lives, in my opinion. So guys, we've all heard it said that if you fail to plan, you're actually just planning to fail. And that is why it's so vitally important that you get your plan in place. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one, -on -one, for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals and we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now the cost of that is $250 and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and we'll get you all booked in. 
So guys, this is the video I have for you today. And as always, I truly hope that you enjoyed it. Now, many of you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Hey, don't forget to put your comments right down there in the comment section and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our regularly released videos. So, in the meantime, and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.